When last we left our heroes, Denir the Catman Wizard, Nara the Drow Sorceress, Asmo the Sneckman Fighter, and Wolfgang the Angelic Warlock, they had helped usher in a time of peace to the lands of Silver Rock. With the Red Dragon Needhog to the west, preoccupied with the denizens of the desert lands, and a fostered peace with the demonic kingdom to the north. However, not all in the north is going as planned for its current leader, Ramses Palto. Meeting with the Nier in his dream mansion, the sorceress archmage told the cat man of dissension forming amongst his ranks that he may not be able to stop, uh, and that he may not be able to stop these issues from spilling over the border. Add to this the upswing and underdark creatures trickling up from the depths, and the world feels as though it is once again on the verge of a new cataclysm. As we speak of the Underdark, we travel beneath the surface of Silver Rock, where Nara has been on the hunt for a few days. Fun for snacks. Delicious snacks. Go ahead and give me a survival check. See if you found any snacks. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um. No pressure. Zero pressure. Oh, my God. Why do you keep saying it? No pressure. Survival? Survival. I lied. All the pressure. No. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> Blinky's back. You better not be. No. Blinky's son. Oh, Lord. How did he now calls you, you mommy. Where have you been, mama? No. No. <laughs> oh, fuck, really? Bowser Jr. The baby beholder. Bab holder. Anyway. Um, it's appropriate that you rolled that low, actually, as uh, it seems the entire ecosystem down here, you're kind of just on the verge of where... Uh, like, you're, you're trying to map out new locations, uh, basically... Uh, ways through the caves by which you can try to get down to the maw itself. And uh, this entire area has been relatively devoid of life. You you actually see as though uh, many of the normal cave-dwelling creatures that would normally live in these areas, uh, be they, uh, you know, large bats, uh, sometimes spiders, it seems as though this area has been kind of picked through and actually hunted and this is an area that you've kind of traveled through before which uh had not been hunted like this before so there there's uh been some uh incursion on this particular spot in the cave systems and to that i do want you to give me a perception check okay as you don't feel as though you were alone. 17. As you're checking out the uh, marks on the ground, uh, a, a kind of on the cave wall, a, a small blood splatter uh, dried with a bit of time. A few claw marks left on the walls. You hear a skittering in the shadows. Ah, damn it. Gets Tango Muerte out uh, and sneaks forward, trying to find the source of whatever that is. You hear the you hear skittering, kind of like clattering around you, the clacking of a stone. Another clacking, the shuffling of soft pod feet. And then you see the shifting in the shadows. Not particularly tall forms, but certainly tall if they stood on their hind legs. Hunched over. One, two, three. You turn. You see some more shifting. Four, five, six. There are at least six of them. Slowly cascading around the tunnels around you. What are they? Uh, you didn't get a particularly good look at them, but they appear to be about medium-sized creatures. Uh, you 
just barely caught the shine of one of their eyes in the darkness as you uh, caught a glimpse of one as it shuffled and shifted down a uh, corridor. They appear to be watching you, studying you. What sort of shape? No, I can't discern their shape. I just know that there's something there. They're hunched over, uh, almost ape-like. Okay. Have I seen something like this before? Give me a nature check with advantage, as the Underdark has been your primary hunting ground. Eleven. There are a few creatures that you could think of that might fit this description. But they already see me and know that I am here. They appear to, yes. Uh, I want you to give me a performance check. Seven. And they know you see them. Okay. With that, they start to huddle in a little closer and closer around you. Uh, backs up a little bit. Hi. Meat. Fresh. 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 As they approach, and as you can kind of hear their uh, cave speak, you begin to uh, better understand what it is you are staring at. Uh, it appears to be a small tribe of Kuagoth. Kuagoth? Mm-hmm. Uh, what do I know about Kuagoth? What are they? Uh, they are vicious beasts, uh, kind of hunter-gatherers. They were driven from the surface lands long, 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 long ago and have adapted to living in the caves until your people drove them even further down. Okay. Uh, are they particularly difficult to fight? Eh, not in small numbers. But there not, are like not, seven of them there, right? Uh, you're thinking even at these numbers, with what you have on you, uh, including the dinosaur around your neck, probably not a particularly difficult batch to dispatch of should you need to. Right. Fresh, fresh. Mm. Danger. Hunter. They silence for a moment. It speak. It speak smart meat, smart meat. Smart hunter. Meat that hunts. Meat challenge. Oh, Kuga. 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 The from? voices start to kind of chant in a chorus. Kuga. Kuga. Where are you from? Uh, they seem to ignore you as they continue to chant Kuga. Uh, as a few of them kind of split and a larger form amongst them begins to walk through their ranks. And towards you. Hold a moment. <laughs> Kuga. Kuga. <laughs> the the one I guess now known as Kuga stands and kind of like raises his arms, his uh, clawed hands barely scraping the edge of the ceiling uh, of the ceiling about uh, eight feet above his head. <sighs> Kuga, uh, Kuga got strong. Kuga got. Find smart meat. You will only find death if you fight me. You can roll to intimidate. Sixteen. Uh, Kuga looks down at you. He has a, uh, a scar across his left eye, which is uh, milky white, uh, clearly due to battles against others that would claim his championship. <laughs> Kuga no fair puny meat. You are but speck, only good for feeding Kuga got children. Secrets. 
secrets that you can't see. Kuagat, strong. Kuagat, no fear. Secret of puny meat. Mm. One more step and you die. The uh, the one known as Kuga. Go ahead and give me another intimidation check. 25, natural 20. He's just about to take a step, and then he catches a look in your eye. And he freezes for a moment. The remaining... I have killed many bigger than you, and many more. The battles you've faced are nothing compared to what I've done. Don't give me a reason. The remaining Kuagat begin to chuckle, almost chiding. She immediately, she immediately looks at all of them. You would be food for my pet if you don't shut the fuck up. Kugafir. Pulls out little ass. Just like wave of her hand. Gets it to her left. The uh, space around him, he just, uh, little ass kind of shakes awake. Uh, little ass can't see shit. She just puts a hand on his nose. It's looking around very confused in the dark. She's just scritching on his nose. Oh. Ha, 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 ha. More meat! More meat! This is my pet. And if you all are gonna make dumb choices, you're gonna be his meat. Got it? Little <laughs> Az is still looking around very confused, blind as the day he was born. Nara is unconcerned with that aspect as she has plans for that if need be. Alrighty. Um, Kuga is still standing very still. Uh, the others seem to be kind of like moving around a bit more. Uh, she uh, puts her hand behind her but then casts uh, dancing lights around so that Lilas can see what they're facing. Uh, go ahead and click that spell. I can't remember if it needs a target or if they just exist. Uh, up to four torch-sized lights within range, making them appear as torches, lanterns, or glowing orbs. So she would pick uh, glowing orbs, and she would probably put one here, 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 and here, just so that the light would bounce appropriately. Sure. I feel like I have tokens for that. Hold on. And would uh, slip her sunglasses on at the same time. Yeah, as you uh, light those, uh, the Kuagat. Uh, sorry, where did you want them again? So, one here, one here, one here, one here. So none of them are in her like direct line, but she does have the glasses on if she needs them. All right, the Kuagoth, as the uh, light, I guess this would give you more vision of well, why that. I clicked reveal, not hide. Uh, the Kuagoth, where the uh, lights begin to shine, uh, kind of like skitter backwards. Goddamn. Stupid large-ass box. There we go. Uh, now that little ass can see. Uh, begins Just to scratching grow. Just his nose. He begins to uh, grow to... About the size that he can in this uh, space. And now ah. she's just rubbing his, like, under underbelly. You could, you could probably still scritch his chin as he's not able to stretch all the way up to his full height. Got it, got it. 
And she's just like very casually clocking the expressions of all these Kuagoth. Uh, most of them are just like screaming at the lights. Uh, and the uh, three behind Kuga just look at him. Kuga kill! Kuga kill! Kuga no weak! Kuga, this is child's play compared to what I'm capable of. I really don't want to have to kill all of you in this room, but I will. Give me one more intimidation. Twenty-three. Uh, Kuga looks back at those that are insulting him. Looks back at what you are. Uh, it looks back at you. Gives out a scream and takes one more step forward. Uh, you oh, warned him, buddy. so you do have a surprise action on him. But then give me uh, a... How, how strong are they again? Would, like, would Tango Muerte be enough to do something? I mean, it would be enough to do something. Probably not, not enough to kill in one round. Okay, let's just go for... Oh, why is this in a weird place? <laughs> That's the, we ask that about Nara all the time. Why is she down there again? <laughs> you didn't see it last session, but essentially uh, Asmo had a little Nara doll, and Asmo would always move it looking at him whenever Asmo would say something sus, just like Nara would be. Oh, my God. Mm. Uh, nope. She'll just go for uh, Scorching Ray then, just right in fucking in front of him. So right. what do you think about Nara, Queen of the Cool Goth? <laughs> oh my god, if she had her own people to rule. <laughs> oh man, that sounds really bad. Kugoth I... is such an aggressive name. I want it to happen so badly. All right, go ahead and uh, roll me each of those scorching rays. This uh, is 2d6 is correct? Uh yeah, you have to roll to hit first though. Oh, why and is it? Are you it's casting not... that at, are you casting that at second level? Uh y yeah, why isn't it doing the thing? It's because it's not listed as an attack in your spell list. At all. Uh, uh, change that. Let me see here. You uh, may have it in your uh, attack section. I, when we redid your oh, spells, oh, oh, we that's went through right. a lot it's in of those. Here. I needed to do this one. There you go. Uh, 27 for 11. That one hits. Uh, the first beam oh, fuck. scorches straight into Kuga's chest. Uh, and then the other two, correct? You have two more to. You have two more to uh, shoot. Yes. Oh, twenty-eight. Oh. So nice. another six. eleven. Nope, six. Six. Was... Oh, six. Sorry, that's for the nat twenty. Yeah. Yes. So we're at seventeen. Mm-hmm. And then the last one is a nat oh! twenty. So it is an eleven. Mm. So she takes shoulder, shoulder, and then uh, leg, if it doesn't just fucking incinerate him already. Uh, it doesn't, uh, but you do take him below half health, which pisses him off immensely. Uh, okay, and since he's also right in front of me, then I guess we're going to Tango Muerte, since that is my bonus, correct? Uh, only if it's already out. Uh, she... Uh, she did get it out before the fight but started. You didn't, but you didn't throw it before the fight started. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Uh, so what's my bonus then? Uh, oh shit. I know what I'm gonna do. She's going to... Where are you, my baby boy? Or mama? Mama! Mama! Whisper. Ma! Ma! Mama! Mommy! Mom! So, she Mom. just... Still, still rubbing little ass's belly and just points right at the kuga or whatever, and uh, just points at him like, go, 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 go ahead. All right, uh, now go ahead and roll me uh, initiative. Okay. Fifteen. Kuga was ill prepared. All right, let me roll for a little ass. All right. A uh, little ass. He is smelling dinner. S <laughs> Stomp. <gasps> oh, baby. Don't hurt me. Don't go. Uh-oh. Please don't tell me it was a nat one. No. Oh. Quite the opposite. No! Oh, nat 20? <laughs> nat 20? <laughs> I need more dice. Hold on. <laughs> 
<laughs> Yay. I mean, oh no, poor Kuga. Oh, wowie. Well, ass. Uh, not, at at, 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 er, at uh, not full grown size, but uh, still enough to take a mighty chunk out of uh, Kuga's back as he bites down, just rips up and like throws him back down to the ground. Uh, Kuga is bleeding profusely, screams in agony as little ass uh, deals an additional uh, 16 points of damage. <gasps> 11, 22, okay. All right, Nara. Yes? You're up. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, this poor fucking sap! Uh, she's gonna... Let's see... Why can't I see? Okay, I have to do melee because he's right in fucking front of me. Uh -huh. Natural 20! A natural 29. 20 will Jesus do it. Jesus Christ! Um, <laughs> it's 9 <laughs> plus 5 necrotic. Yeah. It's another 14 points of damage as little ass just kind of like swings him up to the ceiling, slams him back down, just kind of wriggling in his jaw. You strike him across the throat. This guy is barely on his, like, this guy is barely clinging to what's left of his dignity and life. Um, actually, his dignity is probably gone. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything He's that you'd use as a bonus a action? Yeah, I can use it again. Uh, only if it's thrown, unfortunately. Oh, only if it's thrown? Yeah, Tango Muerte will react to your will if it is thrown and in the air, not if I it's in your hand. I see. I misunderstood. I've always thrown it, so I don't think I've had many instances of it being melee. Uh, bonus action. I don't think I can do anything in this moment, then. Well, then I'll go with Whisper. Yes. Oh, no. What will I do? All right, uh, whisper. Uh, as as you have like Tangle Muerte like kind of shoved under, like kind of like hooked under his breastbone. Whisper wanders up, takes a claw and just slap, and you hear a sickening crunch as his neck snaps to the side. His remaining uh, good eye rolling to the back of his head. And then little ass just starts flinging it around and ripping the meat. The the arms and legs start falling off back towards the other Kuagoth as Kuga is dismembered. Uh, Nara gets that classic, like, blood splatter over her as she steps over and takes a step forward and holds her arms out in front of her. I'm the queen of the mob, bitches. You don't fuck with me. All right. The Kuagoths stand silently and begin to run. <laughs> well, at least you got a snack, buddy. Go ahead, eat up. <laughs> crunch, 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 crunch. Looks at Whisper. Hi, Mom. Good to see ya. Nuzzles you. Kind of head, mm. it kind of gives you that headbutt to your forehead. Gives some some well-earned scritches. And she fades back into your shadow. <laughs> Nara will uh kind of Look around what's left of his clothes and stuff and see if there's anything useful on him. Uh, they don't typically wear clothes, but go ahead and give me a survival check to see what you can pick off its body. Sweet. Eight. Uh, you can find a few of his teeth lying around. They aren't incredibly valuable. Um, some shreds of Kuagoth flesh. Uh, maybe a vial or two of blood that's been splattered everywhere. Uh, and uh, half a bat. 
A vial of Kuagoth blood and half a bat. Uh, she'll just keep the, the, um, do you, uh, uh, Bob, are bats used for spell stuff? Are they useful to you at all? Uh, Guano is, uh, Guano is a pretty important one. I think Wing, uh, Wing of a Bat is useful as well. But, (laughs) uh, Denier has a, uh, a spell casting components bag, which focuses on it, but... You could always bring back a, a bit of a bat. Okay. N- Nara will look at it and go, Aw, Denier would love this, and stuff it in the parallax. <laughs> or in her bag, probably, because Lil' Ass will eat it. Probably. Uh, speaking of, Lil' Ass is currently crunching on him like a, uh, like a beef tallow bone. Do you want to take your snack in the parallax, baby? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it kind of like gives you these big puppy eyes as he's, uh, as the Kuagoth champion is dangling from his jaw. Okay, you can eat it in there because I have to turn the lights off. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she wills a uh, little ass and the rest of the uh, corpse into the parallax, Shook. so that he can continue eating his snack in peace. Crunch, crunch, crunch. You can you can almost hear the you can you can still kind of hear the subtle bone crunching and chomping as little ass uh, continues to chew. Nara smiles warmly as if she were hearing a cooing baby. Mm. Aww, I'm so happy he has something to chew on for a while. Uh, and she shuts off all the lights because she's like, ah, God, <laughs> and takes the sunglasses poof, off. Poof, poof, poof. All right. Well. Well, that was fun. Most exciting thing that's happened in a while, really. <clears throat> well, aside from some things, but still. It now dawns on you that you've been here for, uh... uh you, you've, you've kind of been traveling back out of the Underdark for a... Or uh, out of the caves for a while. Uh, which is why it kind of surprised you that you came across this tribe here, which you are you're currently closer to the surface than you uh, had been previously. You're on your way back up after, you know, you, you try to do like one week on, one week off down here. Okay. So you continue your way back towards the city of Silver Rock. Uh, on your way up, I want you to give me another perception check. Okay. You hear uh, the rather familiar patter of uh, humanoid feet Hmm. kind of scrunching against the uh, earth Uh, as you travel further up. Which direction? Towards me or uh, from behind me? Uh, Further up the trail where you're heading back towards... Okay. Uh, silver rock will become a little more stealthy in her movements just in case okay go ahead and give me a stealth check hopefully she does become more stealthy in her movements just in case 20 so she did <laughs> maybe yeah, much stealthier than you need to be for this uh current troop as uh you come across uh what appears to be a few uh Kylum devotees there's a uh, a gnomish woman with a couple of hand crossbows uh, wearing a set of uh, what looks to be magical goggles and a wide-brimmed, uh, a dark wide-brimmed hat. Uh, two humans, each uh, one carrying a torch, one carrying... Uh, just a bunch of adventuring gear. Uh, oh no! Both, okay. Okay. both, uh, both equipped with like short swords and uh, one with like a spool of rope kind of around his arm. And then a uh, more familiar face of uh, Rebecca Whisperwind, who is uh, leading this troop. Uh, they don't seem to notice you as you kind of made your way off to a 
uh, little side nook in the caves as they begin to kind of like wander past as they're like looking around and marking the area. Wait until they have passed by, and then uh, <laughs> after they've gotten just far enough away that a regular speaking voice would sound too uncomfortably close. Hi, can I help you? Uh, you manage to startle the lot of them uh, as Rebecca turns, just kind of like gri- gripping at her bow for a moment. Uh, the gnomish woman kind of levels both uh, hand crossbows upwards, and then Rebecca very quickly kind of like pushes them back down. Oh, we didn't expect to find you down here, Miss Nara. Queen of the Ma. Of course I'm down here. Well, yes, but we're much closer to the surface than I expected to find you. I was just getting my little baby a snack. There are, uh, actually not that far down. I came across some Kuagoth. They're kind of far up, honestly. Yes, we were informed of those. We were actually heading down to take care of them ourselves. Are there still any remaining? There are, but I just killed their champion and fed it to my baby boy. So, um, they ran away? Suppose that means they'll be weary. Oh, do we need to, like, catch them and do something about that? No, this is simply an extermination to make sure that they don't cause any troubles. They had apparently been making waves by the crypts as well but we wanted to check all of our bases. Oh, did you need me to go finish the job? I can do that. Uh, We wouldn't want you to trouble yourself with something so menial. Did you happen to find anything else what was causing them to come up this way? Chance, they just kind of started calling me meat. Um, I think they're just hungry. Something must I mean, have driven them from their natural hunting grounds then. Well, I was hunting for snacks down there, and there didn't seem to be anything. Like, even bats aren't even around, which seems strange. I mean, I found half a bat on Kuga or whatever his name was. Dead now. Um, so there's just not a lot of food down there. I wonder if something further down is eating all their food and forcing them up. That's my only guess. That's our running theory. Well, we're going to exterminate the remaining invasive species and hopefully figure out what they are being driven out by. Oh, so we're just... See, this is where I have qualms. You guys are viewing them like the pest that needs to be killed but they talked about like their Kuagoth kids and stuff so why are their kids more special than like the other kids up there just curious we just want to make sure that they aren't going to be attacking any of our miners and as they are encroaching rather closely to those lands it's Best to make sure they at least move back down where they belong. Right, but don't, 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 isn't the whole thing, like, talking an important part of the stuff? Do they seem like they are capable of that sort of communique? If you fed them a snack, probably. I think they're just hungry. And I know when I get hungry, (laughs) wow, I just don't care who you are. Go ahead and give me a nature check. Eight. They are a particularly violent species. Uh Uh-huh. And are a little too dumb to understand diplomacy. Uh Mm-hmm. That's the DM telling you that, not... Yeah. Yeah, uh... mm. They're 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 basically cavemen. Right, I mean... She also took the time to domesticate a chronosaur, so there's a little bit of fuzziness happening with understanding why they can't take the time to help them learn diplomacy going on. 
it's th- see there's there's that line though there is an animal that's so dumb you can train it these things are too dumb to train but or these things are uh too smart for you to manipulate like that but too dumb to be able to understand like what is best for them I see well if you're gonna slaughter them all just make sure that you bring up the corpses so my little baby can have a snack again that way I don't have to hunt for all the whatever in the woods we'll see what we can do Oh, come on, it's not going to be that hard. There's only, what, like, a few dozens of them? Get a cart! Dares. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, the, uh, more journeymen, or I guess the, uh, the less adept of them are just remaining silent while Rebecca talks with you, and she's just... Uh, we'll see what we can do. All right. If you don't do it, I'll just come back later. You know what? We'll let you know where we leave them. Sounds great. Thanks. Have fun! She right. walks uh, further along the path. And they continue down their path. Meanwhile, back up in the city. Doodly 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 doodly. Oh, I have so many maps. There we go. So many maps. I have so many maps. Many, many, many maps. Many maps. Is it time for Return of the Boy? The man? The oi guy? We'll find him as soon as. You know, I keep saying I need to reorganize these, but there we go. Meanwhile, in the city of Silver Rock. There he is. Wait. Wait. It's another bright and peaceful day in the city. Uh... Asmo, you just had your morning meeting with Earth. Uh, still having a hard time finding exactly, you know, the... Okay, so I thought about Asmo's plan, by the yes, way. Yes, please do. Okay, so Asmo's plan is as simple. We, If there is an event coming up, uh, the big thing will be... So this is what, what Asmo was thinking about strategy. The thing is, this this, this hate group hasn't grown too big yet. That they're, they're, They still might be a little bit cautious. They're, they're, they're being a little bit... Um, they're prodding. They're prodding to see how far they can go. So Asmo's going to try and set it up so they, they, they take the bait and then we catch them. So Asmo's waiting, essentially, for a chance. Because this is... Asmo's going to, like, communicate with Denier specifically um, about this. Where he like, kind of, like... If anything, you could even have Denier show up here. We could talk about it if needs be, unless Denier has something else going on. But essentially, Asmo has a plan, but he needs to talk to Denier about it. All right, sure. So uh, early in the morning after you've uh, you've met with Earth and mm-hmm. uh, you decide to head on over to uh, the uh, uh, Academy of the High Arcane here in uh, Silver Rock, you... Down to Silver Rock. Da, da. Sorry, sorry. I just every time. No worries. Uh, you. Let me find the correct sounds for this one. There we go. Uh, as you walk in the front door again, this this building, much like the Wizzlestein Spire, seems a lot larger on the inside than it does on the outside. Uh, you have a large circular staircase heading around the core of the building that leads up to uh, the various floors, and you start walking your way up to Denier's quarters near the very top. Uh, Students and faculty kind of like bump into you every now and again as they're making their way to and from their various courses of study. And you find yourself outside of Denier's office near the top of the tower.
Knock, knock, knock. The door handle twists and begins to open slowly, as though being controlled by itself. Denier is further in. There is a massive stone block in front of him, and it looks like pieces and parts of it have been shaped away, and you're starting to see the uh, visage of some kind of a, a horrifying-looking creature uh, being uh, basically taken out of the stone. And Denier's walking around it slowly, looking at it, he waves a hand, casting a spell, and more of the stone flies away from it into a, onto the ground nearby. Uh, for the record, Lanny, I am using... Let me pull up my character sheet, and I will show you the spell. I am using Fabricate. You convert raw materials into products of the same material. For example, you can fabricate a wooden bridge into a clump of trees, uh, from a clump of trees, rope from a patch of hemp, clothes from flax and wool. Uh, hemp! Raw material. <laughs> uh, you can fabricate that... large or small objects. Catch firewall with hemp on you. Everyone so you're fire. creating a statue out of stone, basically? Exactly. I'm making the basis of a gargoyle, and then I'm going to be later on enchanting it with animate objects. All right, I'm going to say that you are, uh, you're going to have to carve each individual, uh, limb of the gargoyle to your specifications. Currently, you're working on the head mm -hmm. and torso. That's but, perfectly fine. Uh, he glances up, uh, towards Asmo. You know, for all the magic, you know, you think you get one to oil your hinges, but maybe that comes with the magic. Asma just comes up casually. That's coming along okay. How long have you been working on that for? Um, uh, I've been working on about a day or so, but the Show the up. creaking is supposed to the creaking is supposed to be there. It alerts me if somebody's trying to sneak into my office. It also gives an almost a feeling of foreboding when a student gets sent up to my to my office. Mm -hmm. As was thinking about it, going like, maybe I should do that for me. Uh, so Asma sits down and just kind of goes, all right, all right. So I have a strategy in mind for the for that little hate group that's starting to grow. The I'm hammers feeling it over of God. Here. The hammers of God. So it's pretty obvious where we think this is coming from, but until you, such time as we get proof, it's useless, essentially, right? Yep. Okay, so, their movements, it's been graffitiing, tagging stuff. You know how, you know what they've been doing. Asma just looks up, at the, looks up at the gargoyle. Interesting enough, you're carving this, because I actually have an idea involving carving something. I want you to work with me on something, specifically. Because this group hasn't actually started attacking people yet, correct? At this point, they still haven't attacked a person? They're only just doing graffiti? Uh, there, there have been, like, a couple of altercations, but nothing that has led to, uh, straight-up assault. Okay. So, we're on the edge right now of it crossing a certain line, and this is where some really eager hammerers, uh, could be caught with their pants down. I want to bait them, and then I want to jump them, so to speak. But even more than baiting them, I was curious, if they were to deface an object, is there a spell in your lexicon that we could track who did that. This is the crazy thing, because I don't know magic really well, so I'm asking a very direct question of this one. If someone graffitis something, and it has been pre-magicked to be preparing for that, could when they touch that, essentially, would could you track their magic? You know I'm not a magic guy, okay? I'm, I'm, throwing, I'm not limb here. Am I making sense? <laughs> As was like just realizing he sounds, he's like, I don't know how to fucking put this in magic terms. <laughs> Is it making sense, though? Because the big yeah. thing for me is if we do a big presentation, and we'll need Wolfgang on this one, we give them a big, juicy target. The eager ones will, I believe, they'll go for it. But right now, we haven't actually crossed that line. The second an assault happens or anything like that, it's too far. and No one's going to be that dumb. But if we catch them right now, we can, they can overextend their hand, and we can get some people to question properly, finally. 
Okay. So, my idea is this. I want to set a trap of sorts. And then... But I need to know if magically there is anything even remotely viable that you know about. Because if there's anyone who knows magic, I mean, while Wolfgang has a lot of magic in his system, uh, you're a student of magic. So it's a bit more open source for this one. I think that it... uh, Lanny, real quick, uh, right off the top of your head, is there... Like, I know that there are, like, glyphs and wards Mm -hmm. and things like that that could potentially work like this. Uh, given that Denier specializes in glyphs, wards, abjuration, so on and so forth, would he be willing? Would be he, would he be able to rig up something like this? There are a few different ways you could probably go about it. I mean, uh, the the most notable, like the 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 easiest solution, would just be to have some sort of like alarm go off, and you know that would be the spring for the trap. But. Mm-hmm. Uh, Glyphs can be, like, trap glyphs can be made to do all sorts of things, to trigger any number of spells, including those of, um, like, marking somebody should they do a specific action. Uh, Using certain forms of, like, divination uh, on a glyph, you can immediately see who has done something. Like, there, there are a number of ways that you can use magic creatively to set this sort of trap. It's it's a fairly mundane magic trap, all things considered. Okay. Well, you know how whenever we whenever we would make camp and so on and so forth, I would be running that silver wire all over the area where we were sleeping? Mm-hmm. That would be a simple alarm spell. I could easily set mm, that up nah, so if anybody no, went to a you, certain area... You misunderstand. It's not that I want an alarm to go off because then they know they're caught. I want to know who it is so then we can find where they go. Well, they that leads... Mm, this that is leads just, me... just two steps to this, essentially. Sorry, go on. Well, that leads me into the next part. Uh, divination magic could easily be used. Uh, glyphs and wards. Trap glyphs could easily be used. We could have it where... Uh, like, make it multiple parts. If somebody comes in that's not supposed to be in there... It arms the trap, but if they do something like they vandalize something, they break something, it could splatter them with something, or it could mark them with a, a particular seal of magic on their person mm. that we could see. We could even potentially have it set to where, the as mo- soon as somebody does the, it, the movements of them after they do the vandalism on a big baited target. My belief is that whomstever falls for this will then go to the person who directed them to do it or that is the person will know one way or the other but if they know immediately then the person who's behind this will go to ground and know that they almost got caught if this person leaves thinking they got away with it and the longer we can leave them to believe that the more information we can more or less harvest from this person it sounds like a very roundabout way of doing this, but simply put, as much as I want to catch these guys in the act, I'd rather have them do the act and see where they go after. That is more important information, because the second we get them, I mean, we can use magic to search their brain for all the information, but even more so, we could skip a giant step here. I don't know. I feel like whoever's doing this knows they'll get pushed back eventually. So... If they think if we're if they think we're not taking them seriously, that means they might overextend themselves, and this will allow us to counter them essentially. This is my plan. It's like setting okay. up a, it's like setting up a trap and jumping people. I mean, I used to do that. You know, I used to rob places. I tried to avoid killing all the time, but I would rob stagecoaches. That's how it, you know how we first met. Not not yeah. me robbing you, but I was in jail, and you know all that all that stuff happened. <laughs> and here I thought you were a legitimate businessman all I was. these years. Oh, I know, I know. Don't even... Oh, God, don't even remind me what I've just spent the last couple of days doing. Like, planning how to prevent crime. It's like, I, I don't even know how this happened. Like, one thing led to another, and now here I am. But, I don't know. This this, this in particular is worrisome. But I also think right now, we can snag these guys. So, you're saying this will take two magic effects, essentially. One to activate what? a trap, and one to slap a tracker, or how, track him somehow, or them. I don't know who it is. Uh, there's a lot of ways that we could go about this. Uh, 
like say for example you're talking about potentially being able to view an echo to see who it was that did this but we could put a tracker on them just to get an idea of who they are and as soon as we know who they are how about something on the ground itself on their boots perchance Maybe not even the item itself, but maybe the ground itself. Well, the second they hit the ground, and then we can, like, you can see their footprints or something. I don't know. I don't know magic. You guys got crazy stuff. So you're thinking of something like an enchantment that'll put, like, an invisible track on the soles of their boots so that mm. with a particular enchantment, you'd be able to see them and just see where the boots go. Oh, not just that, but you with your magical sight would be able to track where they go. You could probably even see where they walked into. We we require us to monitor them for a little bit, but then we have their movements, and we know so much more than one interrogation can give us. And that would also open the door for, uh, for my own investigations. Bingo. The big thing right now is I'm playing this on a very grounded level. I'm not a magician, so these guys hate magicians, so they're prepared for magicians. So the best way of tackling them is through subtlety. Subtlety. So just catching them would be a big show of force, and it's kind of what they're expecting. I don't think they're expecting us to get info like this, so... At least this is my strategy, and if you can, uh, if you agree with me on it, then I think we can definitely convince Wolfgang to do it, because we'll have to come up with a reason, and also... Uh, this gargoyle you're, you're doing right now, could you make it, like, a cool magical gargoyle of some kind, where, like, it means a lot somehow? The more symbolism, uh, this big thing that they all go into, because it's really about baiting them into doing something to this thing. It really is. So the more magical meaning and the more of an insult what they could do to it would be, the more likely they are to overextend on it. So I need to talk with you what we think that would be to a bunch of anti-magic racists. So what you're asking for is potentially a statue commemorating the unity between the oh, sorcerers I, and I, the I common love, folk. I love how I thought about that the other day, and now by just naturally talking to you, you thought of the same thing. Yes, yes this is why I came to you. Bingo. You now know what I'm looking for. I, I'm going to say this is a nice gargoyle, but if we can get something a bit more on point for what we're going for... I think. Oh no, this thing is just this thing is just designed to fuck somebody up if they try to mess with my school. <clears throat> and here's the fun thing. The question is, do we have this in an area before it is presented? My idea is we hype up this big presentation and we have it under a canvas of some kind, right? You know, like a big big cloak of some kind? You you, you with me yeah. on this? Okay, so what they'll do is they'll deface the thing, right? That's the whole idea. They'll they'll take the thing down, deface it, and if we just speak for a second, and then we reveal it, surprise, and then it's all defaced, and they've gotten us. So there really is the question of how do we create a situation in which they think that's the right idea to do that. So do we have it in an area with light guards, or do we have it in another area and we leak the information somehow? I this is where I need to talk to the Wolfgang too at some point about this because eventually the strategy starts becoming a little bit crazy. But I'm happy you're with me on this. Why not put it in the town square? Have, have it, have it, mm. like, have access I thought, to it I, everywhere. I thought about that, but the problem is, is everyone would get in that area, so it would kill the magical tracking. The making it hard to get into means that them trying to get to it would be how we know they are the ones who are doing this. Fair. Mm -hmm. Town square will, means we have two, we would have to have two separate strategies. If we have the town square strategy or some kind of storage area, I mean, both are complicated, but both will require special kinds of tracking. Oh boy, this is why I came to you, because I don't know this whole magic stuff. And, uh, hey, Nick, I got an AFK for a second, because my food just got delivered 15 minutes earlier than I was expecting. Fun. Yes, I'll be right back one second. So I think it's a good place to wrap up the meeting. Okay, okay so, um, I mean, should we go talk to Wolfgang at some point? I'd say so. Okay, you go do that. I gotta go talk to Irv. Now. Sounds like a plan. All right. Alrighty. It just, ee oh, does it when it closes too? That's not ominous. That's just a noise. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Making his eyes water. Ah! Mind the stairs on the way down. Ah! I'm kidding. I'm just walking angrily. I need to enchant a. I need to. En I really need to enchant a step to just grab his foot as he's starting to walk down, just to give him a spook one of these days. Then he really falls. 
And Denier will head off towards Wolfgang's office. All right, Wolfgang. It's another yeah, huh? day of uh, paperwork. Continue signing through various uh, <clears throat> bits of law into the land. Everything seems to be going all right, uh, but you do receive mm. a uh, a missive from uh, Timry. Oh, uh, let's take a look. As you uh, crack open the missive, uh, it uh, first and foremost thanks you profusely for uh, taking the time to hear his presentation. That he shall be arriving. Uh, in a couple of days, hopefully with a semi-working prototype of what it is he uh, intends to build for his uh, to do arcana motive <laughs> tracks between the city of Silver Rock and Amber Glade as his uh, testing grounds. Oh uh, uh, yes is uh, very uh, very proud of what you've been able to do with the city of Silver Rock and uh, it knows that any trader that comes through Dragon's Rest speaks of this place and uh, how well it's doing and he can't wait to see it for himself and also uh, see his uh, see his brother yeah when he comes to visit you uh, but as you are reading that missive you get a knock on your door and Denier is there Uh, I will come in. The door opens up, and Denier pokes his head in. Good morning, Lord Connolly. <sighs> Good morning. You're just sitting there with those, st like that, that Naruto Hokage stack of papers around. <laughs> He just gives a little bit of a smirk as he closes the door and makes sure that everything is secure for the moment. So, Asmo has a bit of an idea to deal with uh, with our whole hammer situation. Oh, right. So, let's hear it. And for brevity, Denier will go through the basic conversation that he went through with Asmo. Along with images for, for ideas and references and so on and so forth. Uh, well. At this point, it's a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. <laughs> Just have like a little... A little folding white sheet that comes down from the ceiling. Hmm. So essentially the idea is to uh, commemorate a statue in something's honor in order to set it up as bait. I'm back. The question is, Welcome back. what would the statue be of? Where would it be placed for best effect? This is the right. thing that Wolf, Wolfgang needs to be talked about too. Sorry. Yep, that's what that's what that's the current meeting. Is Asmo there yet? Now he is. He comes in with his food. Let's get meta with it. Sorry. Asmo walks in with a falafel. I wish it was a falafel. It's just a, a thing of soup, actually. As hey, sorry, I'm eat. I'm walking and eating here. Sorry. Where? Are we're calling him the thing. Asmo Hello, splashes. Asmo. Asmo splashes soup all over some of your paperwork. As he sits oh, down. Sorry. Oh, no, that's gonna stain. That's gonna stain. Wolfgang slowly takes an inhale, counts to ten in his head, and casts Prestidigitation to clean off his papers. Oh, my God. Asmo, Denier was just telling me about your statue ploy. Oh, I know. Rather inventive, isn't it? It's a simple idea. I mean, more or less. The real question is, we have two options of how we can apply this strategy. 
And I think uh, right. I've already, he re, Asmo then reiterates kind of like, I don't want to repeat myself, but he kind of reiterates how this is the perfect opportunity because they're not too big yet. And they're still kind of, they're not being kind of bold. This is where he can step and get them out of line. And my big feeling about this is it really comes down to how we want to apply this. Town Square means it would be a different strategy. means we probably couldn't track people as easily. Uh, however, it's more likely that they will vandalize it if we give the information out, especially if they try to get to it before everything. That being said, if we keep it somewhere else uh, in secret and more of a contained area, we're more likely to be able to track or uh, be able to figure out who's doing this. My fear, if we capture the, the guys who are doing this immediately, they aren't the ones we should be worried about. They're doing someone else's biddings or at someone else's encouragement. So, now... If we catch them, that person will go to ground and we won't see them for a while. However, if they pull this off, I have a nagging feeling that bold people like this will go brag and then we can find where they went. And I'm gonna tell you right now, that's I think that's better than trying to capture them and then interrogate them, at least as far as I'm concerned. But that's me and that's just my idea, so how? All right, well, and he brushes some more splashes off of his papers. Well, ideally, I'd like this problem nipped in the bud as quickly and quietly as possible. I'm not a huge fan of the attention-grabbing aspect of this plan, but I trust your judgment, and if you think it'll work... Well, it's the best surefire way of pulling this off, as far as I'm concerned. They've been vandalizing everything, right? So the biggest, a bigger target, they'll overplay their hand and we can find out who's doing this. And if we don't capture them immediately and find where they're going, we can find out their network. Boom. I'm going to tell you right what? now, this is the kind of thing I had to duck when I was breaking the law, is I could never fall for the bait. I would have to be very cautious, and I still fell for the bait and got captured. Ah, son of a bitch. What we could do, <laughs> keep... Uh, and keep here we this... are. You were staying well, we... in here. Well, we could do keep the statue inside of, like, say, for example, a warehouse. Mm -hmm. Let people know that the statue is being built, mm -hmm. that it's been it's been commissioned and it's being built, and we say let that information slip at a a certain tavern and a certain mm -hmm. guild, and then maybe consult some very special people that can be trusted on certain ways that somebody might acquire or get into said location. I'll give you one even more here. I'm gonna get any guards in the wealthy district. I'm gonna get them to talk about it openly. Mm -hmm. That might lure people to the warehouse and the warehouse in of itself would be a secure location. They would have mm -hmm. to make... Only people there will be guards and ideally the people we're trying to catch, which is why the town square method leaves too many variables as far as I'm concerned. So we... we... I, want you to, I, I want you to imagine, it's like the day before the big reveal of the statue. We also need to ha create a fake holiday. <clears throat> I, I figured that was kind of one of the big things for you, because if we hype up this big thing and we put oh, it covered great. up, we reveal it, they're gonna want it to be all decked out in graffiti. It's a big insult. It's a big move against us. It's so... It's such a great target. And they... It's all bait. It's all bait. We don't even do the event the next day. <laughs> As we're supposed well, to put these hands together. Lenny, what time of... What time of... So it's it's been four years previously. How long is it until Silver Rock's independence? Um, honestly, you're probably not too far off the mark from just being able to uh, claim any one of these days in the upcoming weeks as a uh, particular type of holiday. Uh, there is, of course, the anniversary of the end of Kench's Civil War. Uh, there is the... Uh, <laughs> Which is inevitably the anniversary of his death, which would be the most provocative way of oh, getting these people. Oh, oh yeah. It's just like, it's like oh, and, and the timing of that, though. Because mm. those two days kind of line up fairly well. Um, mm -hmm. Can't really have a civil war if he's dead. Um, yeah. 
so there is that day that's coming up, which would be the, uh, I guess you could call it like Reformation Day. <laughs> that's good. And here's what's going to happen. Is it a two-day event? <clears throat> First day. Have it be a fun event. Have it be great. We do the big reveal the second day. Uh, during the first day, guards can, uh, you know, be a little bit lackadaisical guarding it. That's when someone slips in and does their thing, and then boom. We have it. It would potentially give you enough time to plan an event, because it's a few weeks out. Mm-hmm. Uh, enough time to get an artist to commission a statue. You'd need to figure out who you're commissioning the statue of, what it would be of, and then hire the artists to make it. Uh, it's just compl complicated. Can I just get an AI to do it very poorly? Oh my god. And then all of a sudden really well out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a shame you can't base a business off of that. I mean, we've got plenty of up-and-coming bards to that can be able to make this kind of thing. Hmm. Hmm. But what would it depict? I would recommend uh, the unity between the normal folks of Silver Rock and the sorcerers. If they hate sorcerers, that would be a, a prime target for it. Hmm. Exactly. What is it up, though? And this, I mean, in the end, just the fact that we're presenting it for this festival about unity is already enough to insult it, but I mean, getting the right thing will push them right over the edge. It could be Kench falling over on the ground dead. It probably shouldn't be that one. That actually might cause issues. Yeah, probably not. No, no, we can't do that one here. Uh, I will say this, Nick. I, I'm, I'm, this, is, this is, I guess, for a couple weeks, right? So there'll be a time skip then at some point. Uh, 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 more more likely, there would just be some events while this is being planned, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Well, it sounds like a doable thing, so it sounds like we just gotta talk to the city city council about make, creating a good bullshit fake holiday. It will uh, probably become a real holiday at some point, knowing our luck. And, um, yeah. I mean, okay. I don't exactly need a reason to, to take the day off work and get drunk. Uh, that's true. First day's gonna be wild. That's the big thing. The first day needs to be pretty crazy. Nara, upon arriving out of the uh, caves, would you go to look for everybody else, or what would be your first objective upon heading back to Silver Rock? Uh, so I've been hunting down for like a week, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, she'd probably go check in and see what everybody's up to. Uh, inevitably, your tracking would lead you to Wolfgang's door, so you would just slam in as Asmo is eating his soup and Denier is having this meeting. Uh, oh, hey, Nara! Hi! Oh, oh God, no. I can smell you from here. What the hell? Where were you? I was down in the cave. What? What? It's, you smell! You smell like you're in the caves! Yeah, we were killing stuff. What do you want? <laughs> it's still splattered in Kuagoth blood. Plushy Nara looks over towards Nara and waves a little bit. What is that? The good smelling Nara, apparently. <laughs> she comes over and just slaps his soup. <laughs> My soup! It's all over! Wolfgang's files! I need to get someone in here to clean up all of this after you all leave now. He... Wolfgang, put the, nice. put the gun just down. Eat. Just gonna... enough Six. of his soup that there's still some in there, so he's still eating it. Yeah, exactly. As was hungry. Three, two, one. <sighs> Prestidigitation. Yep. yep. Prodigitations. Oh, Do you there's... have anything to report? Oh, um... Queenie? Uh, it's Queen of the Ma, mm -hmm. first up. I know. Let's put some respect on the name. Second. Yeah, um, I know. Yes, I gave you some that cool title. Goth. Thank you again for that. It's funny that just, you didn't use it just now, but whatever. I gave um, you a different one, but. 
queen of them all. So I saw some kuigoth. They were kind of close to the surface. Um, I was going to try and like talk to them like you guys always encourage oh, me to do. No, they're hard to reason with them. Yes, I learned that. I killed their champion or whatever um, and fed uh -huh. it to the little ass. Um, and then they all ran away. But then you guys, you had some little crew of people coming down to do something about that, so... Yeah, we sent down a team to investigate why they were pushing so close to the surface. Oh, you yeah, didn't happen to learn anything. There's, like, nothing down there. There's, like, no food, no life, no, like, not even bats. So there's something going on down there, but, uh, I don't know. Uh, from Maybe what you could, it's from weird. What you, from what you could gather from the lack of life in this area that you were looking, it was because the Kuwagoth had been hunting there. Oh. Well, the Kuwagoth are eating everything, so there's nothing down there. No wonder the guy wants them all dead. Well, that and they would be disturbing our miners, so... Yeah, well, your team promised me all the bodies so I can feed the last, because... Mm. I'm getting really bored of hunting things that aren't fun to hunt, so... Is there anything else that's like more of a challenge for me to go hunt down? You could do your job and discover what's happening in the maw. I mean, there's those weird fleshy cows down there. Yes. Although you probably don't want to fight them all at once. Yeah, I know. So, I'm at an impasse here. I know there's weird fleshy cows, and your blood tree is probably somewhere down there. But, uh, what else am I supposed to do? Keep flying around looking at flesh cows? The what? The flesh cows, the one that are, they're like chewing on each other and eating they're the... each other and, yeah. We've fought them plenty before, Asmo. You remember the in the caves. Nah, now I do. <sighs> I prefer to he hide sort from of, him. He sort of pinches the bridge of his nose and he thinks for a moment. I mean, if you're looking for a challenge, you could always join the Kylum or the uh, the guards training sessions. I can I can think up something that might challenge you. Your challenges are sneaky. I don't know if I want to do that. Do you need I me mean, for anything? I have a thing I need to go look into. <laughs> Just look at her incredulously. Covered in sapphires. A thing. Yes. You're All going right to me, aren't you? What? You're going hunting again, aren't you? Yes. I am. For what? Creatures to murder, as my bloodlust demands. Thought you said you're getting bored of hunting creatures. That's why I'm going to hunt for more. If you notice how I'm not arguing with the Queen of the Ma, it saves time. She, like, tilts her head back a little and, like, widens and... She squints her eyes a little like yeah trust 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 those words trust them okay hear me out nara a three-headed asmosaurus rex with a giant wyvern stinger for the for its tail see but Word. i would just want that to be my pet i wouldn't want to fight it i mean if you can beat it maybe it could be a companion whenever you're in the dreamscape. Mm. 
Maybe I'll try fighting a flesh cow after all. <laughs> Wiggles eyebrows at Denier like, no. You, you always have some <laughs> sneakerit thing in there, and I don't trust it. Sneakers. Too many sneakerits. Too many sneakerits. Wolfgang just sort of puts his pen down, a bit overwhelmed with all of this. Why? What have you guys done? What have you? What do you have to uh, report? Planning a holiday. What? Why? Queen of the Ball? No. I just want to make a face. That could work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure, people would want to vandalize it. What? Well, mm, they I don't know. If they, I don't know if they would. I mean, that would give that. me something to hunt. Mm. Uh, you're mm. coming in at a different stage of the plan right now, Nara. I'm not gonna lie. What? <laughs> now hold on. Can, can we make? The, can we add this? Can we make this work? Make what work? I don't know. I'm just. I'm just trying. Queen just of trying the to, no. Make the holiday be about Nara. Is that what we're trying to make work? I don't know. Do you want to do that? No, unification no. day is the better the better play. But... I would have to agree. <sighs> Brown. Let's. That's what I need. So you're planning Not... a holiday? Do you, do you need me anymore? Do, wait. Do I need to know about this plan? Mm. As we just finish this soup. <laughs> So here's the plan. He just explains it all. All right, there. That's what we're doing. So, okay. or unless in a couple of weeks we'll be doing uh, at this uh, special event, and we're gonna find these bastards and where they are. A little bit off topic, uh, Asmo. How's Master Firefang been? God, how is Master Firefang being? Bored. He has been very bored. Nobody has been dealing with the dragon, so he's just been basically rotting away in his cell. Uh, for four years. <laughs> he, he, he can't really do anything unless he has materials from the dragon or information on the dragon to go by. And uh, nobody's really made Needhog a priority so long as Needhog has been uh, focused to the west the uh, running theory there is as soon as anybody tries to do anything to uh, like your fear is accidentally provoking him and drawing his attention eastward. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Ther uh, Theradoc has just kind of been your prisoner for right now. And he has, uh, had nothing to contribute and nothing to basically add to your situation until you have need of him. So he has literally just been in his cage being fed by you and kept alive as a prisoner. We're good people, guys. We, we're not a bad person. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, he is a criminal. Yeah, he, he was—he was, he was gonna do some pretty shitty stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was planning some very heinous things. Of course, wh whether or not you could go ahead and say that this is like a minority report thing where you're punishing a guy for a crime that hadn't been committed, but I mean, sedition is technically a crime. It is. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Justified in imprisonment. Yeah, he's just sitting there with his uh, his wings in rags, all razzy eld. Fuck yeah! I don't think he thinks the same way. But... <laughs> Since we're all together, uh, mm. the situation up north is getting a bit more dire. Uh, Nidhogg is still a, still an issue. I've I've got concerns. Um, like, like I've seen what happens. I saw what happened in the dream that Wolfgang showed me, 
and I don't want him to come east. Not to mention, we don't know what the Jester's doing. Oh, that's and, a pretty good point. And Ramses is slowly losing control up north. Wait, did I just, like, not pay attention for a really long time? Yes. Oh. Well, so the north is not good now? Ramses is fucking up? There is a there is a voice that is starting to whisper into the minds of, uh, of his quote-unquote children, the newer batches. Mm. He thinks that the... He thinks that his first batch of children are still loyal, but he's slowly losing grasp, and he doesn't know how long he can keep it in his borders. So the more and more the generations, I guess you could say, go downward, the less sway he has over them. I think so it's that's... due to the fact that he doesn't have a, uh, a second voice uh, helping him keep control anymore. What was or the what second voice again? I can't keep track of the voices in people's heads. I have enough. He said the gems used to talk to him, but the gems aren't talking to him anymore. So, but we, they're talking we, to the children? We we know that his his future self was talking to him, right? Uh, y you would know this, yeah, because yeah. future uh, Denier Prime would have alerted you to the yeah. I think presence. I think he talked to Denier, and then he relayed that information to us. Mm -hmm. Well, the Denier from my timeline mentioned that Ramses was giving his past self information and pointers and, and power, I think. And Denier put a stop to that. And I think this is the result. So... And the voice that's talking to the kiddos is Crystal Man. We've got a few ideas, and that's one of them. Something, at the very least, related to the crystals. Some sort of presence. Tree connected to all that? Fairly certain. So, just spitballing here, if that tree gets more powerful, does that make Crystal Boy more powerful? I sure hope not. Because if the Kuagoth are coming up, that could mean that further down, things are too dangerous for them to stay. And if something is so dangerous that the Kuagoth need to leave, could that not mean that flesh cows are becoming a bigger problem than just flesh cows? That is precisely why I sent the team down there to investigate, and that is also... Your job to inform me the situation of. That's what she's doing right now. I just did it. What do you want? Yeah, she's I'm doing, doing she's, my job. She's saying she didn't have a shower yet, dude. She still smells. Ow. What? Turns. Slaps. <laughs> just stares. <laughs> what? Do you need to be You look great. Bed? You look great. Oh, my God. I'm fine. Oh, my God. That's what just crosses his arms. Do you need to bring it up? Is it no. that important? No. no is that, just... Oh, I'm sorry. Is that part of the briefing today? I just killed a Kuagoth champion. What have you done? Ate a bowl of soup. All right. Didn't, didn't eat so all it's of fine it, if I smell. What? <laughs> I didn't get all off. right. Enough. 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 This, my office is not a place for you to have your spats. I... <sighs> okay. The situation with the Quagoths and the Maw is being looked into. You literally saw the team coming up. Yeah. That's being taken care of. I snuck up on them I really easily, by the way. Like, really easily. They're not the queen of the maw. Of they're course not they're trained. not going to be as proficient as you. They're not trained to hunt you. 
puts hands on hips like, no, you're right. All right, that's being looked into. I expect more updates in the future. The situation with the statue, fine, let's do it. Reclamation day. Let's build the statue, have the holiday over a weekend. It'll be a big event and hopefully it'll draw the kind of attention that we need in order to track these fuckers down, find out why they're doing what they're doing, and nip it in the bud. And I kill them once we find them. We gotta be patient. Patience. No, so no. yes. Trying to avoid bloodshed if it's possible. Until after the event. Avoiding it if it's possible. <clears throat> Until it's over. The Queen of the Ma isn't a queen without her people. Yeah, and these are the ones that we're going to kill because they're not mine. Right, they're mine, and I get to decide what happens to them. Keep forgetting that you're the lord of the whatever. The lord of this whole place, the one that gave you all your positions. Yes. Right, right. The one who can revoke them. <laughs> she, like, chuckles and has a whole body convulsion, like, all gay. So, was there anything else that needed to be brought to my attention? Let's see, demons, dragon, uh, prisoners, uh, potential cultists. Uh, cultists? Uh, hammer of God. These hammer. The guys. hammer of God, guys. We were talking about weeks later. Right, right. Sorry. Sorry. Nara, have you you've been out of the sunlight for a while? My God. I was thinking about the potential for maybe murder after the event. You're so focused on the end. We still have to well, get there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's see. The enchantment of uh, Lonara to haunt Asmo at all times. Uh, I can't think of anything. All right. Well, I suppose then... Thank you for the update, Nara. And we have our plan. We have our statue. Well, we gotta find someone to make it. I'll get someone on it. Not okay. Can I tell you who not to give the job to? You know who. Why you? You can't say his name. Say it three times, he'll appear. What, Hackless? Ah! You said it once. <laughs> I said it once, and he said it I, once, so... I no don't more. have the power to summon Hackless. Only ah! Denier does. Asmo just looks around. Asmo's kidding, but, like, low-key. You, you get a knock on the door. Hey, I hear my Uncle Timry's coming! D <laughs> oh, my... <laughs> oh, hey, buddy! At... And here is where we'll take a quick break. <laughs> hey guys, Lanny here. I just wanted to thank you for rolling with us. And if you wanted to catch us live, you can do so almost every Monday at 5 o'clock central time over on twitch.tv slash Lanny Pator. Now, back to the show. All right, we're going to fast forward a few days to, uh, or probably the next day to a uh, quick council meeting. Reclamation day, you want to call it? Venario says hey, it's a, she's shuffling around papers. It's a working title. And this whole thing is a ruse to entrap these hammers of God. Only half a ruse. Suffice to say, right now, we're even having this conversation here. We're opening ourselves up to this information being leaked. Well, information won't be leaking out of this room at the very least. Uh. 
looking around the table. Uh, Nara, would you be attending this meeting, or would Doll Nara be here? Nara would go just to see what the uh, events are being planned to be, and if she can hunt down the people we're looking for. Flix has kind of a, a inquisitive look on her face. I'm all for a party, but how much funding will we be looking to put towards this little festival? Well, we're already looking to get a statue commissioned. <clears throat> I'm not sure what something like that would cost. It would depend on the artist, I'm guessing, and the materials you wish to make the statue of. The statue is part of this trap, so you'd want it to be something that could be easily transmutable with spells, correct? And she looks to you, Denier. I was thinking we have plenty of stone from the mines, plus on top of that, removing some stone might make the miner's job a little bit easier. I mean, we live in a city that's known for silver. Perhaps you'd want to make the statue at least partially out of that. Hmm. Possibly. And who would or <clears throat> what would be the subject of this statue? Someone brought up the idea of it depicting the arcane innate and the people of Silver Rock coming together in some way to form a harmonious union. Hmm. Union of the arcane innate... My thoughts is it would be a way to ease the tensions between the arcane innate and the common folk. And on top of that, it would be a step towards changing Silver Rock's history. And hopefully it would be a first step to begin to change the, the viewing of the arcane innate in general. Perhaps erecting the statue in the center of town where the old burn pits used to sit. Hmm. Huh. Apt. I think that might be appropriate. <clears throat> Replacing a icon of hatred with a monument to unity. I can send out a call for artists. They'll of course need to be compensated for their time. Would you like of to in would you like to interview them or would you like me to interview them? I think we should interview them. Very well. Why don't we just ask the Durgar? Hmm? The Durgar. Well, I think it might be a bit more poignant if someone from Silver Rock actually made the piece. Mm. Um, or, at or at least someone currently in Silver Rock. So you want local They're artists? Kind of in it. Under it. I don't know. Makes sense. Yeah, uh, listen, with the Durgar, we should probably actually do a real statue for our higher growing budding relationship, considering how much money we're all collectively making between the two of us. This, we need to keep them separate from this entire BS. Be best. Yeah, I guess. Now, the festival itself, I'm assuming we'll want a feast of some description. I'm actually thinking a fair amount of food stalls. Uh, make it a kind of a festival of food. Have a fighting tournament take place during it. Bring in a bunch of people. It's fine. It's, it's, it's very obvious. 
do have we, plenty of food. Mm -hmm. We will have to keep keep in mind that we are sending out a significant amount of funds for the uh, for the beginnings of the train situation of the Arcano motive. Uh, we so funds may not be readily available for mm -hmm. a massive extravagant festival. I My... think we'll be all right to these sort of side of ice flicks for the time being. Oh, you have plenty of money to play with, but no, it is not unlimited. But I can work my magic and make things work for you. The coffers will keep coughing so long as the silver keeps flowing. And hopefully flow it shall. <sighs> All right. <coughs> security will also need to be stepped up and may want to take care of the continual uptick in Yumberry wine production. Oh, it's still going up. According to the recent statistics, yes. Oh, bloody hell. We've... Uh, Asmo, the latest statistics are you, you've been able to bust a number of stills in the uh, slums and some out in the nearby forests, but... Uh, it's a game of whack-a-mole. That's what, that's it, what fighting it, drugs it, is. That's what it, it is. It, it really is, it, especially with, like, moonshine production. It's very easy for them to just find a crevice yeah. somewhere. Do you know how still. easy it is? You know how easy it is to, to, to make moonshine? You just need a little crevice and patience. Okay, mm. it's really hard to crack down on this stuff when it can be made anywhere, which is why it is not advisable to make something illegal that is readily accessible from the ingredients lying around you. Yeah, oh, God. I think, my, I think my dad used to make his own wine. Criminal. It's not so much of an issue so long as the wine itself is not... Well... So long as the wine itself still tastes of alcohol, you will know when you are drinking too much. It's the yumberry aspect of it that makes it dangerous. Yeah. We really do gotta... Sorry, limit this somehow. We could potentially try to shift out... Uh out the growth of Yumberry for maybe the growth of Dr uh, Giant's Ambrosia? Uh, maybe. We already raised taxes on the Yumberries. And they are a pretty big cornerstone in our current economic fortune. Especially as we're up in our exports of them. Uh. All right, so I shall send out a call for local artisans. Excellent. And you wanted a, a fighting tournament. Looks over at Asimo. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Just come on, like, come on. It's obvious, get a bunch of people in town, it's great entertainment. We do have that one. Asimo's gonna, I guess, out of character. In this town, we've been here for four years. Do we have a fight pit of some kind in town? I would think so with our size. We would. Uh, not a fight pit, per se. I mean, you, you certainly have some, like, bare-knuckle boxing competitions that various eh. taverns will host, but... I might need, for any kind of tournament, I have an idea. On the outskirts of town, we could, of course, dig into the ground a little bit and create a nice little sitting place. A nice little sitting plaza, almost, and have the fighting in the center. And after it's done, could... fill it in! We could cordon off an area somewhere on the outskirts and Absolutely. have that be a designated area. I just need nothing some, too I, extensive. I just need some magic users to be able to, uh, you know, move out dirt, and just need someone to, <laughs> you know, I mean, smacks. I've never done a construction build before. Asmo scratches his head. Not have, my thing. Have to have a few local clerics on standby for any incidents. 
Would there be a cash prize for the winners, or...? <clears throat> Hmm. Well, I don't know. You can get you well. Obviously, some kind of trophy. You won the tournament. Congratulations! You won the first ever tournament of the the you the you the the the, the yeah yeah. You got it. You won it. Any prize fighter worth their weight would only fight for a proper prize, I suppose. Perhaps some sort of weapon fashioned from silver rock silver. <laughs> As was sitting there chuckling to himself. <laughs> Something elaborate but practical. Uh, uh, <laughs> I have a very evil idea. Do you want to hear it? Not really, but I can close yes. my ears. Yes, tell me. Where's Kench's hammer? Aswa just smiles. Ah! <laughs> Oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, what a Cur lovely plan. Currently, it hangs in the halls of the Kylum Diaboli. Yeah, I know it does. What a prize that would be. I'm just, I said it was evil. Don't actually agree with me, God. I'm agreeing with you, though. Mm, you know, I... That thing comes into play. The The hammer of God is going to immediately try to steal that thing. Mm. That said, it is a symbol of the town's strength, at least to the old guard of the town. I don't know. Ah, we don't need to no, not muddy this up here. I was just saying openly. But you're not wrong. Some kind of silver rock uh, shield of some kind, maybe. I don't know. Obviously, you can commission something of some sort. People would want that. I mean, sure. if you... If you do a fight pit, we're likely to see some some faces from the past that may specialize in uh, in fighting. He glances towards Asmo and gives a little bit of a grin. Huh. Hold on, you yourself weren't thinking of participating, were you? She looks. She now looks to you, Asmo. <laughs> oh no, that's not happening. I'll be very busy that day. I'd love to take part, but that won't be happening. I can't. It's going to have to be somebody else. A, You've already won, game. like, one of the biggest tournaments in... ever. Yeah, but we have... I've worked that day. My job will be the most stressful job ever on that day specifically, and do not forget I'm suggesting this. So, no, I will not be able to take part in the tournament. Above game, Denier was hinting at the fact that Flix has a gin at her, uh, under her, uh, management that kicked the shit out of Wolfgang and has fought Asmo in the past. In a fight pit. Hmm. Fight pit. I'm sure if the prize is suitable, people will come from all over just to see. Mm. Lord knows there'll probably be a few from... Wild's Edge. They would like to take their crack at it. I'm sorry, you cut out. I... What, did you, what did you say? Sorry, you cut out on my end. Uh, said Lord knows there's probably a few from Wild's Edge that would take their crack at it. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it, uh... Let's keep it practical, but uh, also elaborate. I think I, I like my idea of the short sword made of silver, or at least coated in silver. Hmm. Weapon made of silver. Fancy number. What would you like to cap the price of the prize at? Oh, shit. Um... Uh, I... This is where my... Uh... 
Let's say... Look, I can say whatever you want, but I'm going to get in trouble, so... Yeah, it comes down to you, I'm pricey. <laughs> pricey, pricey. Maybe... A, a 2,000 gold? Mm, that's, pretty, oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Sure to bring in a few contenders with that. Ooh, I got you even one better. How about this? 2,000 gold worth of silver rock ore. Mm -hmm. Loses the symbolism. That does? Well, we're in silver rock, so, you know. Silver. Yes, but a weapon befitting a... Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, this, okay, it's fair. Fair, fair, fair. Right. I think that's, uh... Would you Fair, wouldn't you say? Would you desire any enchantments to be placed on it, or simply a ceremonial blade? Ah, I don't think we need to get. I don't oh. think we need to get terribly fancy with it. A right? ceremonial blade with with their choice of uh, runic uh, magic affiliation. Yeah, there we go. That sounds good. Yeah. How much more expensive would that be? A two thousand gold silver weapon could probably have a mundane enchantment already placed upon it. Okay. Let's 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 do that then. I'll consult with Hackless. See what <sighs> we can work with. Right. Here's an idea. What about something that will make the blade as eternal as Silver Rock? Make it give it like a, a mending or a prestidigitation enchantment so that the blade will forever keep itself pristine, clean, and sharp. Hmm. As eternal as silver rock. I like it. I'll consult with my brother. He Simple enchantment. Have, he shouldn't have trouble with something. Simple enchantment like that means that it won't be as expensive, but it'll still look fancy as all hell to the common folk. <coughs> Very well. We'll get local vendors for the foodstuffs, and no doubt we can sell lots to traders to come in and sell their wares. We could maybe even, uh, this might be a little bit of a pull, but maybe even reach out to Dragon's Rest, see if Pig will open up a stand for, for the festival. I can reach out to the business council in Dragon's Rest and see if there are any interested participants. <clears throat> Potential sponsors to help levy the cost as well. Mm -hmm. Very well. Until I have a list of artists to speak to, I suppose this is as much information as we can go on for now. All right, then. Is there anything else pressing? Aside from the usual... Hmm. Oh, no, he said that, no. Any news on the Nidhogg front? Uh, no recent word from Wizen, at least not in the last couple of weeks. Everything is still status quo over there as far as you're concerned. Alrighty. Hmm. <sighs> what else? What else? You got something on your mind? Uh. uh frequently. Oh, bloody hell. Um. Did I get any word back from the Kyle and the Eboli about how the mission went? Uh, the hunt is still ongoing. Uh. Presently, the word you got is that they have been. Uh tracking and hunting uh the the three teams that went down there are currently tracking down and uh successfully hunting down the kuagoth 
All right. But haven't found any uh, sign of what the disturbance that pushed them up has been yet. Well, suppose there's nothing else pressing. Guess that means for, for now this meeting is adjourned. Uh, again, I always imagine Wolfgang just shoots his gun into the air when that happens. I don't Bye. know. Bang! Oh, jeez. Oh, we'll have to patch that hole. Put that on the docket for next time. By, if, if that, in fact, is how you would end the meetings, then... No, uh, absolutely <laughs> not. I would oh say that, that the uh, walls itself would be... It would have some sort of a mending rune at that point. <laughs> no, definitely not how Wolfgang would finish his meetings. Yeehaw! Clack, clack. <laughs> I tell you, this, meet, this here meeting's adjourned. Wow! <laughs> Uh, does Wolfgang or Asmo have anything specific that they want uh, their troops to be trained against in not, terms of dream training, like fighting monsters or what have you? Not right now for my guys. Uh, well, since it's on the mind, how about the uh, how about the uh, crazy uh, demon cows? Demon cows, demon cows. So... You want Denier to run the Kylan Diaboli through the Bleeding God special. Okay. He can do that. It's about to get scary up in here. <laughs> Anytime you throw them against the Bleeding God's <laughs> demon cows, for lack of better words, um... They they do run the risk of Denier kind of losing control of them, being that they are his nightmare creatures. Well, if Wolfgang knows that, probably wouldn't do that. They, they, they aren't in physical danger, per se, but uh, there is the chance that they would not be able to pull back until the battle is done, no matter what. Because likelihood, when this emerges, actual nightmares probably em enter the dreamscape <sighs> and take part in it themselves. Uh, Wolfgang would probably ask for Denier's personal opinion in, in that point, since he's not... he's he the, Denier is the resident dream specialist. So this is all out of Wolfgang's purview. It's if if you want me to send them in there, I can. But this is a phobia that this is one of my personal phobias. So it's quite possible that uh, we're going to have multiple actual nightmares come in and take part in the battle as well. You I'd know what? Like Mm -hmm. I apologize. I had completely forgotten about that. It's been a long time. Let's not put either you or the Kylum through that. We'll we'll figure out a different way. I think we'll be fine for now, Denier. Denier gives a, a slight nod. I appreciate it, Wolfgang. Yeah. And somewhere else, there's a sneering cat staring at a at a leaf. Are you referring to Prime? Yeah, Prime watching the 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 whole situation, having a better understanding of fear than Dreamwalker than Dreamwalker does. But with that, Dreamwalker will go ahead and if the meeting has been adjourned, he will go ahead and head out and go about his business. All right. As for your business, uh, you uh, you have been looking for like another headmaster or somebody to assist you with the academy. Uh, you do have 
uh, one candidate waiting for uh, interview today. Mm -hmm. A Thermian Haslafar, uh, another tabaxi. Oh, shit. Mm. What? Denier will go ahead and head out, head over to the, to the meeting. All right. Uh, inevitably you find this, uh, how, how tall are you, Denier? You said you're like seven feet tall now. Denier is seven feet. Yes. Yeah. This guy is, uh, almost as tall as you, a bit stockier. He's, uh, a tiger striped cat, a uh, big frilly full bodied face. Uh, he stands with a, uh, a prim kind of like red satin robe draped over his shoulders, uh, leather gloves, on his uh, large mitted hands, uh, and he stands leaning on a staff, uh, kind of like just kind of like back to the wall, waiting outside your door. Ah, good day, Master Denia. Good day. I hope your travels have treated you well. They have. They have indeed. Uh, I hope you don't mind. I arrived a little early. I, I heard you had some business do attend to indeed please come with me and he will allow, open the door and allow him inside all right uh how would your office be decorated as you walk in and there's like that partially crafted uh gargoyle there as well the office in of itself would have a hint of home um but it is largely built similar to how the Galder's Tower is built, uh, his study in, in, the, uh, in the tower. There is facets of it that, that, lead, that lean towards uh, life on the islands back home, but at the same time, there's bits and pieces of all his different travels there are there's a little bit of the deserts to the to the west there's a little bit of meternacht around the race of snow globe is on his desk in full display but it's it's built to be comfortable more than anything there is of course the the mysticism of a, a headmaster's office but it it looks more comfortable than anything Uh, he uh, kind of eyes the baubles and uh, little trophies you have set around your hall. Quite the collection you have, sir. I've been on quite a number of travels. So it would seem. Well, <clears throat> where would you like to begin this interview? Well, tell me a little bit about yourself, of your specialties... Uh, what branch of the arcane do you specialize in? I believe we would term it as wild magic. Ah, you are one of one of the blessed of Arcanos, the arcane innate. Indeed. He gives a nod. It has been a hard journey learning. Not many places would teach people like myself, as you are aware. Not until recently, with your efforts. Have your... How long has your travels taken you away from home? Some time. I left my tribe when I was... Two. I want to say... In my cresting young adulthood. He gives a... He gives a bit of a nod. I first noticed my affinity for the arcane arts. Back then, my hair would stand on end roughly before any... Let's say it's not even necessarily ill, but but 
I noticed I tended towards the uh, divination. Was my specialty for a while. I had a sixth sense for encroaching events, let's say. A useful skill, especially for one that is akin and attuned to wild magic. Uh, does it give you a heads up when a surge is about to happen? Yes. My whiskers would flick, my hair would stand on end, and I would be able to find a means by which I could release these energies without harming those around me. A useful talent. One of the most dangerous aspects of the surges, and I'm fairly sure that you've heard the stories of those of the arcane innate just combusting and into a massive fireball. I had heard. My travels took me many directions, both lands foreign and domestic. I had heard of the many who were burned at the stake here, for example. And those who were killed in the north as well. I will admit I was tempted to leave for the north permanently when I heard of their rise in prominence. But word of your offer beckoned me back. I'm happy that you decided to come back. Those of the north walk a, a different path than what we walk. So I've heard. Uh, I, so you... So I, he specializes in divination, yes? Yes. Uh, could be useful. Could be very useful. Have you... So how much experience do you have working with those that are still in their formative years growing their powers with the, the with the arcane less than i'd like i am ashamed to say i merely know how i grew to understand my own powers i can use that as a means by which to teach others of course but I was more studious in the realms of art and literature. He gives a bit of a nod. This academy deals with not only the arcane innate, but with also the traditional practices of wizardry. Do you have knowledge of those particular particular pursuits as well, or are you strictly with the arcane innate? My abilities lie primarily innately within me, but I did have to study a few spells here and there from the schools of wizardry in order to hide my gifts from those that may wish me harm. A traditional practice. I've seen this used many times. A former mentor of mine did the exact same thing. Carried himself as a uh, as a wizard for a great many years. It is the very reason I carry these books with me. And he uh, flips open a satchel and you can see some uh, fairly old dusty tomes that uh, look well poured through. Uh Mostly books like uh, that contain information on some fairly uh, mundane, arcane secrets, uh, things that anything up to like a level three or four wizard might study. Mm -hmm. How capable are you at defending yourself or others should a serious incursion happen? What sort of incursion are you expecting, sir? Well, 
I will give an example of what happened at the, the previous school down at Dragon's Rest. I... I'm aware that you are... Are you aware of the, as they call it, the Great Burning? With the... Dragon that attacked The Red there. Worm, yes. I had heard tales, but luckily I was far away from the events. In a situation like that, the defense of the of the school and its people would be the utmost priority. There are a number of defensive wards all over the building, but in a situation, say, the school would come under attack or there is some kind of an incursion, how well do you believe that you would be able to defend not only yourself, but the students and the people of this town? My abjurative abilities are not the strongest, but I do have the ability to He ponders to himself for a moment. Can I get a feel for, like, given my given my knowledge of both arcane and sorcery magic, can I get a feel for just how strong this guy is? Uh, let's see, what would this be? So you're essentially trying to, like, read his magical aura, right? Mm-hmm. Do you have a spell that might assist with that? Like uh, detect magic or something like that? I, I do have I do have detect magic. Uh, I have uh, detect magic identify. I I don't know if scry would help. Um, let's see. Detect magic might be your best bet at this. Mm-hmm. Mm just to read his to read his magical aura something like that yeah okay then i would burn a slot for that all right hmm hmm uh let's see I do have a means by which I can hide myself from levels of detection and help suss out various ne'er-do-wells. It would be more of a preventative sense. And you can see him start to kind of like channel something as you start to channel your spell. Uh, he starts to focus, and when you detect magic, you see in his space where it would normally be uh, all sorts of aura where you'd see his, uh, you know, magical items and whatnot. You see simply a null of space. He has, he gives been, able to, he has been able to hide himself from your detections. Non-detection, basically. Yeah. He, gives a, he gives a little bit of a, a grin. A tactic similar to what I use. He motions towards his, his form. Uh, despite me carrying magical objects to uh, to a simple detect magic spell, I would come off as not carrying anything but mundane. Hmm. And you had to learn this on your own. My abilities simply manifested. He gives a little I, bit of a nod. I admire your dedication to the craft, sir. I I have learned of both the arcane innate, the ways of the arcane innate, as well as the ways of the traditional arcane arts. Um, and I I'm, I'm thinking of how to properly uh, produce this. Um, so whenever it comes to uh, capabilities. What do you believe is your strongest, the most powerful spell that you are currently able to uh, 
uh, produced and cast in terms of the circles of magic. He ponders for a moment. I am, like, say, for example, I am currently uh, working my way through the sixth circle, beginning to attempt to cross the boundaries into the seventh circle. I believe by the definitions of wizarding magic, I have crested into this sixth circle. He gives a nod. I can cast a various for a varying amount of illusions as well. And have some small gift in manipulative magic. Enchantment? Yes. He gives a he gives a bit of a nod. Useful in the most grave situations, although some would say that enchantment is almost as while all magic is based on the user, some would say that enchantment is almost as dangerous as necromancy. Which is why it is best known to be able to defend one again, oneself against it. He gives a knowing nod. Let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I'm missing on this kind of a, an interview. Uh, can I roll an intelligence check to think about the kinds of questions that Wolfgang might ask? Uh, I'll say go for it. Just give me one intelligence roll. Mm -hmm. 18. Wolfgang, what's one question you would ask this guy? One question I would ask this guy. Hmm. We talked about his abilities, how strong he is, uh, his knowledge whenever it comes to teaching, his ability to defend the school, um, his specialties, if he is a, a sorcerer or a wizard, and what schools he specializes in. Um, this is very Wolfgang appropriate. Uh, one thing that Wolfgang would ask this person is, if it came down to it, would you lay down your life for the people under your care? I have a, um, I have a fairly good relationship with the lord of the town, and I know for a fact the question that he would ask anybody that's potentially going to be taking a leadership position. Would you give everything it takes to keep your people safe, including your own life? I have been dedicated to my pack since the day I was born. And I wouldn't hesitate to give all I could to make sure that they were safe. Can I insight him? Absolutely. On I would be disappointed. I would be disappointed if you didn't. <laughs> Twenty. Every word he spoke is uh, truthful, but you said there was something specific about it that you wanted to check in on. Basically, just this is just a an insight over the conversation that we've been having, but I this is the most important. Like I need I needed to know if he be willing to make that sacrifice because he knows Denier knows that every single person in his party would make that sacrifice this man is uh to the to those he identifies as his clan he is uh do or die ride or die with those that he has accepted as family i think i've heard everything that i need to know I offer you the position, a position of 
a member of the faculty here at the school and at times when I would need to step away as headmaster from this school, I would entrust the school to you. When I am still here, you will act as my second in command and you will learn everything that you need to know in order to run this school. A, an additional ally to you would be Varnariel Whistlestein. She is she is a liaison between us and Dragon's Rest, and she has well, the Whistlestein family is known for their capabilities in the arcane. She will be a valuable asset for consultation to you as well. Master Tanir, you humble me greatly. He uh, grasps at his cane and bows his head humbly towards you. I. I will do my damnedest to never let you down. Have you ever encountered, and he will show in his hand this small, this image of a small shard of a crystal. Have you ever seen one of these? He uh, glances up. Let me give him a quick intelligence check. Where is it? A magic gem of some sort. I haven't studied much in terms of enchanted gems, but I have heard tell that they are quite popular in the north. They are. Have you? How far have you gone up north? And at this point, Lenny, I'm watching him because I'm now asking. I'm now beginning to piece together if his appearance coincides with Ramses's uh, disappearance or the disappearance of various items in Cold Reach or Iron Iron Forge. Right. I began traveling my way up there. I heard there was a tribe of tabaxi that lived off in the frozen lake region. I didn't make it too far before I heard word of your school and the job opening. Ah, yes. Up in, I believe, Ice Claw is the city, and he gives a he shows a, a like a, a small picture of the tavern that uh, Aurora's family runs. Yes. I've encountered these people. Fine folk. Their fur is white as the snow. So I had heard. I was hoping I could find like kinship there, but then hearing about you, I quickly made my way back down. gives a, a bit of a nod. I'm happy to see that you've... I'm happy to see that you decide to come down this far. I don't know what's happened up there. There's... a strange order to that place. Many of the old gods have been routed to the south while the strongest of the new folk tend to live further north. The strongest among them still live in the floating city. And how do you feel about the new guard? Conflicted. On one hand, they are of like blood with me. On the other, their powers are strange and frightening. He gives a nod. They walk a different path than we do. Well, it's the same path, but we chose different parts of the same road. So it would seem. 
they chose to become something entirely different. I don't believe that's the right path. How do I don't you, believe that... If but, I may be so bold, how do you feel about them, sir? He thinks for a moment. Their actions will determine my opinion of them, but... I believe that they're misguided. They... They still... They still hold true to their word that I've seen, but I disagree with the fact that they've rejected what they were to become what they are now. I think that that's going to take them down a dark path that they'll never be able to return from. They walk a razor's edge. And I don't trust myself to even fathom what would happen if we were to try to walk it. He nods in uh, thought. But come, I think it's about time that I show you around the school, introduce you to some of the students. Yes, please. By all means. And he uh, taps his cane to the ground and uh, follows you out into the halls. And again, while we were talking about, like, say, for example, the demons and everything like that, uh, any chance I can roll another insight? Please do. 14 on that one. Uh, he seemed to be absorbing the what information you had given him. Uh, mm -hmm. and answered truthfully to the best of his knowledge. And I will let you know, above game, Denier is going to be somewhat cautious in case this is... In, he's going to be cautious with this, uh, this fellow. Uh, just curious, what is this person's name? Oh, yes. Uh, I believe I gave it. Uh, it uh, was Thermian Haslafar. Understood. Thank you. He's going to be cautious with Thermian because he he has heard the warnings from Ramses, and he doesn't know if this is somebody trying to get into steel secrets as well. But at the same time, he's going to give him enough rope to hang himself, as you say. Gotcha. But he is going to take some time and introduce take him around introduce him and generally try to begin to train this man as a second in command all right and as you take him around introduce him to the uh faculty and students and show him the ways of the school the day passes and preparations for the reclamation festival begin and here is where we will end today's session.